Hello again guys, it's Chris. From selling public monuments to making millions by lying, here are 8 of the most famous con men in history. Number 8. Victor Lustig One of the greatest and most common cons you can pull off is selling something that isn't yours. But one man named Victor Lustig took that to a whole other level when he sold the Eiffel Tower. This is a very true story for the record. So how did that happen? As with all clever cons, it was all about timing. In 1925, a newspaper ran an article in France that noted that the upkeep of the Eiffel Tower was getting way too expensive. This was long before the Eiffel Tower was considered a treasure and most people thought it was just an eyesore. So Lustig hatched a rather simple con. He impersonated a government official and called six scrap metal dealers to a meeting. Using the paper as evidence, he noted that the government couldn't maintain the tower, and so they wanted to sell it for scrap metal in order to save money and be able to relax. I mean, not really, of course, I don't know exactly what he said, but whatever it was, it was convincing. Needless to say, had this been true, the scrap metal dealer would have had a lot to gain. Sure enough, they handed over the money and Lustig fled. Once the yard worker realized the truth, he couldn't go to the police at a sheer embarrassment for what he'd fallen for. After many other cons and a rather legendary career, Lustig was caught and sent to Alcatraz, and he died not long after. Interestingly enough, though, that wouldn't be the last time the Eiffel Tower was sold. Number 7. Charles Ponzi Charles Ponzi is a name that is as infamous as the scheme he's been immortalized for. But the irony of this con man is that his life is not as well known as many think. An Italian immigrant born in 1882, he moved to North America in pursuit of the American dream. Not much is known about his early life, and Ponzi was known to lie like a lot. He wrote bad checks, he stole from his employers, and was just kinda not a great guy. He had many aliases and started getting attention in the 1920s, and not like attention in a good way. He discovered a weakness in the postal system of the time. When you sent letters abroad back then, there would be a voucher included to exchange for the minimum postage back to the original country, like when you return something that has a return label included. But since the exchange and postal rates fluctuated, you could actually make a bit of a profit. It was technically legal, and he thought, why not just do this on a massive scale? But he needed people to invest and he promised them a 50% return. Everything was going great and everyone was getting their money, but what happened? Well, he wanted more. So he started keeping the investors money, getting rich, living like a baller, and got the new investors to pay for the old ones. Word got out and regulators raided his office. He didn't have anywhere near enough coupons to back up his strategy, and the government brought 86 charges against him. He skipped bail, but eventually went to prison. When he was released, he was deported to Italy, and now his name will remain in infamy. Number 6. Joseph Weil Known as the Yellow Kid, Joseph Weil had a very interesting career as a con man, and he apparently stole about $8 million when all was said and done. Like most con men, his scam started small. He found his co-workers at a debt collection agency skimming the profits so they could make more. And Weil offered not to report them, for a price. Then his ambitions grew larger. He went and started doing all sorts of schemes to make more money. Fixing races, making phony oil deals, even being a fake doctor. Whatever it took to get him the money he so desperately wanted. When he wrote his own biography, he noted about his deals. The desire to get something for nothing has been very costly to many people who've dealt with me and with other con men, but I found that this is the way it works. The average person in my estimation is 99% animal and 1% human, and the 1% that is human causes all of our woes. When people learn, as I doubt they will, that they can't get something for nothing, crime will diminish and we shall live in greater harmony. Given the state of the world and the state of con men in the present day, humanity has clearly not learned that lesson. Number 5. Frank Abagnale some of you might know the name Frank Abagnale from the movie Catch Me If You Can, with Leonardo DiCaprio playing Abagnale. He was such a legendary imposter, forger, and con man that he conned 26 different countries over the course of his tenure as a con man. 
At first, it was just him making fake checks to get more cash when his account was clearly overdrawn. He was calculated to have made $2.5 million worth of these scams and fake checks over the years. Moving on from there, Abagnale impersonated a pilot so that he could get free flights all over the world, all via a loophole in the airline service. Frank was a pediatrician. He got a law degree, got admitted to the bar in Louisiana, and so much more. Whatever he felt he could do, he just went and did it. As most con men, he was caught eventually, and would start a very long and tedious process of going to jail, sneaking out of jail, getting caught again, and repeating the cycle. Eventually, after serving five years in prison in the United States, Abagnale was offered a job to help the United States government find forgers like him. Quite ironically, after his time was served, he started his own company and is now legally very rich. Number 4. George Parker Hailed as one of the most successful con artists in the history of the United States, Parker was most known for his selling of landmarks in New York City. For example, he was infamous for selling the Brooklyn Bridge multiple times in a single week. He would convince people that because they owned the bridge, they could regulate traffic and make money that way, and he got multiple people to buy in from him over the years. Other landmarks he sold include the Statue of Liberty, the original Madison Square Garden, and many, many more. But it wasn't just his words that made him legendary. He was an expert forger who made very believable legal documents to help prove that he was the owner of the various things he sold. After a third conviction in 1928, Parker was sentenced to life in prison. But he wasn't sad, rather he was one of the most popular people in Sing Sang prison because he had plenty of great stories to tell. Number 3. Eduardo de Valfierno Eduardo de Valfierno was able to mastermind one of the greatest robberies and cons in the history of the world, for he hired a group of men to steal the Mona Lisa from the Louvre in France, and then he sold forged copies of it to interested parties who thought they were getting the real thing. Cons on cons on cons. This happened in 1911, in fact. Eduardo de Valfierno paid some men to go and steal the painting, and weirdly, it was very simple to do. One of the employees simply went in, grabbed the painting, hid it under his coat, and walked out. And if you've seen the Mona Lisa, you know it's actually a very small painting. Now, Val Fierna was smart. He knew that once the painting was taken, it would raise awareness all over. So to counter this, before the heist, he had a forger make copies of the painting. And then he mailed them all over the world to ensure that they were near the buyers before the painting even got stolen. Eduardo de Valfierno got the original and tried to disappear, but then he got caught selling it in 1913, and thus the painting remains in the Louvre to this day. Number 2. Bernie Madoff One of the most infamous men in all of history, Bernie Madoff did his own version of a Ponzi scheme that defrauded people of $65 billion. It's billion with a B. This is the largest amount defrauded by a single individual in the history of the world today. The true irony of the situation is that the only reason he got caught and sentenced was because he confessed to his sons who turned him over to the authorities. But it didn't start out as a scam. Madoff owned an investment securities business and made his success over the years of hard work until he was one of the biggest names on Wall Street. To further help him, he brought in family, like his son and renowned specialists to help make sure the company ran well. But as time went on, things started to look out of place. Madoff's numbers just didn't add up, and one man even proved in the course of four minutes that Madoff was lying about his finances, but no one would believe him. As time and the scam went on, Madoff could see that everything was collapsing, and he had to confess that it was all one big lie. Millions were hurt by Madoff, and his greed and fraud are a testament to how far a person is willing to go to make it big. Though the money he lost could never be returned, the people he defrauded did get some justice in that he is sentenced to serve 150 years in prison. Number 1. Robert Hendy Freeguard There are many different kinds of cons in the world, and many of them involve money. But for a man named Robert Hendy Freeguard, he took great pleasure in not just taking money, but ruining people's lives on a fundamental level. Now he did this was simple. He conned them into thinking they were going to die. Not by a disease or some unlucky accident, but that they were targeted by the IRA. You see, Robert Hendy Freeguard was British, and he convinced people that he was part of MI5, the British intelligence agency, if you will. Anyway, he would find people and tell them that the IRA, who were a 
big threat in the UK and still are in some ways, was after them. He promised to protect them from money and having them do exactly what he said. And this would include doing loyalty tests, where he would have them cut off all ties from friends and family, or go live in certain places and do certain things. All in order to both prove their loyalty to MI5 and that they would listen to him to be safe. Hendy Freegard did this to both men and women and actually would seduce the women to make them do even more for him. So gross. Eventually, he was arrested and put in jail, but he never confessed to his crimes. And though authorities did find many of the people he conned, they don't think they actually found them all. Well, thanks for watching! If we've learned anything here, be careful who you trust and where you put your money, okay? Did you know about any of these legendary con artists? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe, and then I'll see you next time.